<laughs> hey, welcome back. For any, anybody who showed up last time, if you're still here, more power to you. So thank you so much for coming on Be The Hero. Hey, we got a big show for you today. I'm gonna go through my sort of takes on various interesting things that we're seeing around the world. And, uh, and we've now we have four subscribers. And at the end of the show, we're gonna spin the wheel. And if it lands on any of these subscribers, they get a free book or a T, my book, or a T-shirt, my book. It's called uh, Go Be a Hero. What is it called? <laughs> anyway, we got a great book. Uh, the Startup Hero, How to Be the Startup Hero. And it's coming up. Um, I also want to thank Draper University students. They have, uh, first of all, they've come through with a lot of interesting new uh, business plans and they've been, been watching the show. Um, and we've got a great new program for uh, Draper University online. Uh, we still intend to have the offline school start on June 20th. Uh, and we, we've got 50 people signed up from all over the world. They should be coming. And that's going to be awesome. Uh, and we're going to, we'll do the spacing and the six feet. And then, you know, you can wear, you can wear this, uh, <laughs> this kind of a mask with Spider-Man on it. Um, I won't be, but you can. Uh, the, uh, uh, but the online school is we can make you a hero. Uh, it's just two weeks, two hours a day for two weeks. And it's $500, and, um, and we can actually make you a hero. And we need heroes. This is the time. We've got this, this virus, and all of the effects of the virus, which are even worse than the virus, are clogging our judgment, are messing with our lives. And, uh, and so uh, why? But in any case, we need you. We need heroes to take us out of this horrible situation where we got 35 million people unemployed in, in the United States and 10 times that much many globally. I hope you come up with a way of employing all those people. So, um, so go out there, come up with ideas. We're brainstorming here. This is a big brainstorm. We'll spin the wheel. We'll make great things happen. Maybe we'll slam, maybe we'll hit Captain America's shield. Uh, many things can happen here on the show, and I'm going to want to hear from all of you. But first, let me take you through some of the things that are going on in the world today. One is, uh, there's this bore, uh, the boring thing that goes, it's not boring at all, but it's um, Elon is taking um, the boring straight under Las Vegas. I think that's fantastic. I think um, the Nevada government seems to have it right. They, they, they're laissez-faire, they let stuff happen. Interesting things happen there. Uh, the, the construction's extraordinary. Uh, a lot of, lot of uh, interesting projects, and they, don't, they aren't heavy on regulation. Uh, and so Elon clearly has chosen Las Vegas to do that boring, and, uh, and it's gonna be pretty interesting. We, we might have real transportation shooting underground through Elon's system of uh, boring through Las Vegas. Uh, second thing that I noticed happened out there, um, the SEC forced Telegram to shut down the TON crypto. And you know, there are 400 million people on Telegram. What, why would we shut that down? That's incredible economic value. That's new progress. A lot of great technologists are on that, on Telegram. They all wanted to try this new program, this new kind of currency, this new exciting way of operating. What are we doing trying to shut that down? That makes no sense. We want entrepreneurs to be able to do stuff and try stuff. 
and we want to we want to try stuff. We America's leading the charge in this regulation. Why don't we lead with freedom? Why don't we lead with something that encourages people to go out and try things? Uh, encourages you entrepreneurs to go ahead and try something without having to fill out overlapping at regulation from all different parts of life. We've got to we got to send a good, strong message. And, and it's not like you can't blame anybody. You can't blame a bureaucrat for this. The bureaucrats are trapped. They're stuck in this world where they, they can't do anything. They have to be careful what they say. They, they, they're, they're in this. They've trapped themselves. And we've all trapped them into this weird world. It's time to be open. It's time for the world to completely open up and let these let a thousand flowers bloom and let's see how those flowers look and if some of them look like weeds then we can trim them but let's just let it happen these the US is going to lose all sorts of technology because uh, the regulators are, are sticking uh, sticking it and and changing the nature of what it is to be an entrepreneur and what to, what it is to be an innovator we need innovators to have the freedom to innovate. Um, you know, we want to be free. Uh, we don't want to be stuck with masks on our faces and have six feet separation. We want to be free. We want to be free to innovate, make great things happen. Um, and uh, and I, look, I would rather die than give up the freedom of my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. I want them to be free to innovate and try things and explore and, prog and build progress and build a better life and employ people. For God's sake, let's employ some people. We've got 36 million people unemployed in, in the US, 5 million unemployed in California. Employ them. Don't make it difficult for people to hire them. Make it simple for people to hire them. Don't put rules on them. Make it simple to, to, for them to roll. OK, wait, there are some other things that needed Tim's take. Um, Uber acquiring Grubhub for $6 billion plus. Good for Grubhub. Way to go. And Uber's such a great service. And boy, I hope I can start using it again. God, I, this is. This is very exciting. So good for Grubhub. I hope they all made a fortune and they feel great about the, the deal. Grubhub's been a good service all this time. And Uber Eats is also great. DoorDash is great. Maybe they'll get acquired. Who knows? Um, all those services are providing us amazing service at a time when they've shut down all the restaurants. So we got to use them. Um, OK, there's a question on the chat. By the way, Finance hasn't revolutionized over the last couple of decades. The exchange of value undoubtedly has indeed become fast, but it's nothing close to the revolution internet brought to the information exchange. Absolutely. And by opening access to democratize the creation of new financial markets, society benefits on the scale brought by the information revolution in the past. Absolutely. We, more, more trade creates more wealth, creates a better society, more jobs, all of that. We want a frictionless economy. We want the economy to be able to, to move, spread. We want trade to, be, trade to be able to happen across borders. And we want Bitcoin or other crypto to be available for everyone so that we can use it uh, without having all that friction that's created by banks and regulators. And, and, uh, and, uh, and we can create a world that is much wealthier and less, with less friction and a lot more trade. So absolutely, uh, I don't know, who was that? HBX1. HBX1, good question. It's amazing. And he's subscribed, so hang in there, HBX1. Terrific. OK, let's see what else Tim's takes are. Uh, let's bring up a few more, uh, you guys. Um, terrific. OK, so uh, contact tracing apps. Oh, we're going to see one of those, so uh, let's put that off for a bit. US renewable power 
coal for the first is greater than coal for the first time. Well, that's exciting, boy! All of this, all of this uh, solar and wind and all all of these um, new forms of energy uh, were in, innovated by people like you, and they drove all of this extra energy. And now we actually have more energy coming from solar and wind than we do from coal. And uh, so we'll have a cleaner environment and hopefully we'll, we'll get more nuclear power out there too uh, so, that, uh, so that we can have a huge amount of power with very little impact on the environment. Um, uh, number six is what's Tim's take on TikTok? TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Okay, there you can just turn that into a TikTok, send it off. I like it, it's fun, it's interesting. I think these teenagers are loving it, and when the teenagers love it, it becomes a huge empire when they become uh, part of the work world. So uh, TikTok's a great social media platform. Um, now it turns out that France has uh, made it so social media programs um, are responsible for the offensive content that is on them. First of all, who says what's offensive? Send me offensive content. I love some offensive content. Send more offensive content to me. I'm happy to look at offensive content. I, I, I can always delete it. I can always not look. I can always do whatever I want. But what's France thinking? They're going to determine what we're allowed to see? Well, that, that's totally ridiculous. What's offensive? What have they decided? It makes no sense. And then they're making, the, they're making the social media companies responsible for all the two billion people around the planet who are putting stuff up. So even if there were a moral authority that should be able to tell people, all the people, what they're allowed to see, should they also be able to blame the company who's just allowing it to, ha allowing it to happen? and make them responsible, it's absolutely ludicrous. France, get your act together. Freedom rocks. Freedom creates much more economy. France, if you want your economy to roll, make it roll. Let people be free, open your borders, and don't tell everybody what they're allowed to see and not see. Okay, U.S. can't use equipment from Huawei or ZTE. You know, trade wars are not good for any of us. Trade wars are bad all the way around. We, we benefited so much from the opening of the world through the internet, through the various countries around the world and how they've all, everybody has benefited. The whole world became much wealthier, much better place to be, uh, and we all benefited from open borders, open for business. Well. Trade wars, trade wars don't help. They don't help your own people. You know, if you're, if you're China and you put up a trade war barrier, your people have, will suffer from that. They will not have the benefit of whatever trade was happening across that border. Same thing with the US. Same thing with all the countries of the world. If you put up trade wars, beware. Your people will suffer. It's just as though, it's as though you've created, you've waged war. Your people are going to suffer. It's an economic suffering, but it's a suffering nonetheless. I want, I want the world to be open. I want those geographic borders to mean less and less. And I want trade to be open for the entire world. And that's why I love Bitcoin. Um, because it's open for the whole world. It's a, it's a, it's a currency everybody can use. Okay, and then MIT Harvard face mask lights up when detects COVID. You know what's great about you entrepreneurs and engineers is whenever there's a crisis, whenever there's a problem, whenever there's something, an engineer comes up with something that just, you know, rocks the world and fixes things in some weird way or gets us thinking about new things. Um, so there's a mask that lights up if you walk around and you see and you're close enough to COVID. Um, I think that's pretty, who knows whether that's interesting or not. But 
think of the technology that went into that and how other things that that technology could be used for. Um, I think that there are going to be plenty of new applications that come from uh, the technologies that come out of COVID. So if there's any kind of a silver lining for all this political grandstanding and, and the, the uh, problems that we've had throughout the world because of COVID, the silver lining is that, and I mean, let's, let's face it, it has been horrible for so many people around the world to have the virus, but uh, there, is a, there is a silver lining, and that is innovation has flourished. And all of the innovation that these guys are coming up with and all of you potentially are coming up with to change all this, that innovation is going to make us all so much better. And it might, might be innovation that takes us to the moon or cures cancer, but it was it was uh, innovated or accelerated because of this virus. So that's a, there are some positives that come out of this virus and the lockdown, but um, I think we would have been better off not locking down in the first place. Okay, a, Fos a Frosamuria 1990 says, how about access to information? People are liberated by knowledge and elites recognize people have access to information beyond their control, and now they misinform people to control the narrative. Do you see this being an issue with transition from the Internet of Things to the Internet of Value? Are we going to still have access to open information and free classes the same way we do now? You know what? I, I love this question. Um, Alfrosa Muria, 1990. You are a subscriber, and we love you. It's amazing. It's amazing. And, um, and here's, here's what I'm, I'm thinking about here. Um, yes, information is, uh, is spewed out to all of us from all different forces. All those forces might misinform. They might exaggerate. They might change the narrative. They might do a number of different things. I think what this is doing is, well, first I can tell you what this is doing sociologically. It's forcing you and I to think for ourselves and to find, find more sources and figure out where the data really lies and wh what is real and what is not real. And, uh, and that is really, uh, that's exciting because I, I think a lot of people delegate their brain to the media and then they just parrot whatever they hear in the media. And now you realize that that media has, is driven by advertising and that advertising is, comes because people um, watch the news because they like the fear. Uh, it's weird, yeah, it's weird, but they like the fear. And the, the fear sells media, sells ads. Um, so the media will just keep sending us fear. We have to recognize that that's what we're using the media for, is fear. There's some information, there's some value that we receive from it, um, but there's a lot of fear. And by selling us that fear, we've got, to, uh, we've got to recognize it and not allow the media to take that part of our brain away and, and just don't parrot whatever you hear in the media. Uh, think about it first. Um, here's the other good thing that's happening. Um, I've run into two or three companies that have tokenized truth. And, uh, and so once again, the Bitcoin blockchain and smart contracts are combining for a better world. And uh, when you are uh, when, when somebody puts something up there on the cloud or somebody speaks, in the newsroom or whatever, uh, now we are going to be able to tokenize that and tip the things that make sense and dump the things that don't, and uh, and we'll be we're going to be uh, much better off, and and that truth will come through. Uh, the days of Walter Cronkite, where he says that's the way it was, and he really. He did it right down the middle, and he made it as honest as he possibly could. 
Those days are probably over, uh, although that's probably an opportunity for you as an entrepreneur to go be that person who goes right down the middle and says, this is the way it is, here are the facts. Uh, you know, there is, that, uh, there is a service that gives you just the facts and they have a little fun sense of humor with it. Um, and my daughter's invested in it. Uh, what's that called? The, it's, it, it's, no, it's not Snopes, it's, uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I, I love the service and it's great. And it does just give it to you straight. Um, and I think people will appreciate that. They know that they're not gonna get it from the, from the uh, networks. They're not gonna get a straight scoop from the networks probably ever again. Maybe there'll be a new network that's created around that, but uh, they're not gonna get it from the networks. Um, so, uh, tokenized predictions over the next 10 years. Person with the most accurate prediction gets to work, <laughs> work at Trend for VC. <laughs> All right, good, very creative, getting a job. I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, we, have a, we have a visitor, we have a uh, guest on Zoom. Hey, we have a Zoom guest. Hey, all right, what do we have here? Stream, stream chat. Are we gonna see their face or is it just gonna be a chat? Okay, I'm looking at a rainbow and me. Uh, but I'm good with that. I, the rainbow reminds me of my mother, I appreciate that. Um, the, uh, there is a question here, but does that limit transparency? And, uh, and I think there, we're talking about, um, hey, about the truth. Okay, one second, Tim, we got uh, audio, but no video yet. Okay, well, we're working on it. So, um, so yeah, I think uh, the idea of tokenizing the truth right. does limit transparency. Hey! Hey, look who's here, Andy Tang. Hey, Tim. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I thought this is the perfect lead-in, Tim. Somebody said that uh, if you make a good prediction, you get to work for Draper VC. Well, I work for Draper VC, so maybe I'll- So make a good prediction, Andy, will I'll you? I'll make a good prediction. Hear, hear, hear this out. <laughs> It may be hard for you and me, but but I, I'll make I'll make this for the audience. So in I predict in nine months, in nine months, there will be a baby boom. Oh yeah, absolutely! Oh my gosh, and and plenty of plenty of uh, <laughs> marriages and plenty of divorces and uh, and a lot of. Uh, and I, I know that my own daughter, uh, the, the, not the valley girl, the other daughter, has been living with her boyfriend and they weren't really planning on living together. But all of a sudden they're, they're sort of stuck living together and now they're figuring out whether that makes sense for both of them. And uh, you know, it's, a, it's a, probably the toughest test they'd ever possibly go through. So yeah, we're... <laughs> Nine months. We're going to have a huge baby boom. Okay, what if, else? If you believe in that, then it's much easier to make the next prediction, which is in 2033, there will be a, the rise of the quarantine. 13 years. T -E -E -N. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the end of the quarantine. Oh, I love it. I love it. So Andy works for Draper Associates. Andy is a brilliant investor and uh, has been with me now almost 20 years, done amazing things. Um, and uh, he's run the school, he's, he's, uh, he, he basically fills in all the gaps I create. So it's great to have Andy sharing the screen here with me. So Andy, what advice do you have to these people to be the hero? To be the hero. To be the hero, be bold, and be brave. Uh, but in seriousness, though, uh, big fan of the show. I've watched all episodes. <laughs> Every single episode. All two. 
two. Maybe I missed one. I saw one. <laughs> no, this is the second one. Oh, good. Yeah, then yeah. I've seen it all. Okay, I've good. Seen it all. Yeah, perfect. I've seen it all. Uh, what is your favorite university? To, to be the hero, I, I think um, uh, people oftentimes sort of mistaken, you know, hero means to do extraordinary things. But uh, I think in this environment, you know, just sort of uh, do your job um, the best you can. Um, and then every day you try to be your best self, regardless what it is. Uh, a lot of us are stuck at home. Uh, you know, I, I just try to make it as, as, a, as a normal day as possible, right? Have a routine, do what I normally would, um, go out as much as I can, um, wear a mask when they tell me to. Um, and make the best out of it and, and continue to challenge the status quo. Yeah, good. That's good advice. And do you want to tell everybody what Draper University is all about? Yeah, so Draper University, it's a, um, you know, as the name would imply, it's a school. And it's a school, uh, not unlike other schools you've been to, it's a transformative experience. We essentially take uh, 20, 30 year old um, aspiring entrepreneurs. And we sort of teach them about um, how to transform themselves and take those skill sets and transform uh, either the society, the company, or the people around them, right? It's a five week program. Uh, and now we have an online program, right? So we, just like everybody else, um, have, adap uh, have adapted, right? It's a, it's a five week program we take students through and we turn them into heroes when they come out. Uh, but in this quarantine era, we actually can't house people. So what do we do? We basically turn online. And I think we're gonna have one of the most attended and most successful session ever this summer in our online session. Um, and our goal is to basically do the impossible you know, be the hero and turn it online, turn a offline experience, a very hands on um, learning by doing experience and bring it online. And there's a there's a hackathon. Um, the online hackathon might might it might make sense to uh, to have the hackathon be how do we how do you adjust to this this world that's um, been affected by the virus. Maybe that's yeah. one of our hackathon ideas. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, and it's one of those things, um, you know, I'm a firm believer that uh, intelligence are uniformly distributed around the world, but opportunities are not, right? So it's always been my goal to, how do we democratize the access to entrepreneurship? How do we make sure you know, any person who say grows up outside of Silicon Valley, outside of the US, you know, uh, has that same chance of probability of succeeding, right? So a online virtual hackathon is our way to essentially um, uh, uh, flatten the world. I, like, I was gonna say flatten the curve, but flatten the, the world so that we bring opportunities to um, everybody um, in the world very equally, right? Now, one of our viewers has asked, uh, can you use the GI Bill at Draper University? And the answer is not yet. Um, well, no, it's, uh, there has been a way to use the GI Bill at Draper University. We worked through uh, ASU, but, uh, but now it looks like uh, we will have some form of accreditation um, in, in uh, 2021, but you yeah. you can't use the GI Bill right now, and certainly not for the online school. But I think uh, you know we we would encourage you to apply anyway. We've um, I, I tend to give a lot of scholarships, and we do um, appreciate uh, great entrepreneurial energies. And if you've got a real passion for something, we can find. We can find a way to make make it work for you. Hey Tim, how about this? Remember how we always say that uh, you try to say yes more than you say no, and then you always say how would you do it if you were to do it? Maybe we'll turn the question back to the viewer and say how would you use the GI Bill 
to enroll at Draper University. Maybe you can help us figure it out and be a hero. <laughs> All right. And Andy, your, your face is slowly drifting off to the side of the screen, so make sure you get centered if you can. <laughs> am, I, am I on? Or am there, I on? better. Perfect. Oh, good. Right. Now, you're, now you're over the other side, but that's good. Okay. Um, okay. I'm from South Africa. How do I go about registering for Draper University? Go to draperuniversity.com, and you can, uh, you can register. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, Andy introduced me to Dr. Ferdinand from Johns Hopkins last month for building tech to tackle COVID-19. He's extremely helpful. Yeah, all right, Andy, Great. there's some yeah. chops for you. We'll spin the wheel. Right. Good job. Um, oh, look at that. Well, th sorry, Afro Samurai. Samurai. We, this wasn't the spin for the book or the, or the T-shirt, but we, we spun it. Anyway. This was a spin for Andy. Um, OK, so. Um, Andy, any, uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, we've been talking about uh, a lot of things, but basically getting these entrepreneurial heroes that are watching the show, the gamers, the whoever, to get out there and try to figure out how to employ these 36 million Americans that are out of work and the other 300 million people around the world who are out of work. Uh, what? Do you have any thoughts for that? I, uh, well, I've been doing a lot of thinking because I've had a lot of time <laughs> at home. So I got some deep thoughts. So my deep thoughts are, uh, you know, this is really, it, it's a very sad event that's happening. A lot of people have passed. So, you know, you got to take a moment to just say, it's a, um, um, I feel bad for those who were affected. That said, th those of us who are lucky enough to be standing here or sitting here watching, especially watching Twitch, uh, is that we should take advantage of the situation, right? We should take advantage of opportunities. This is uh, akin to a major earthquake that happened to a landscape, right? The landscape was very tightly um, constructed and for the outsiders didn't have a chance to come in, suddenly there are these huge cracks. I see big cracks in healthcare. I see big cracks in education. I see big cracks in government services, right? And these are industries that have been long, have been long, been heavily regulated, and they haven't really been transformed by the internet, right? So if you look at how internet has been around for 20, 30 years, it transformed telecom, it transformed retail, it transformed media, it transformed financial services. And it had made those industries better. But if you look at healthcare, you look at education, you look at <clears> government, um, there are a lot of opportunities, right? You look at um, you know, student debt as an all time high. And I think we are talking to this audience. I'm sure many of you have, have student debt. Now, if I ask you, are you happy with the product you receive from education entities? I'd imagine not many of them would say yes, right? So how could we do something to serve our student customers better, right? So that huge opportunity, right? Healthcare is the same the same way, right? You know, it takes you know five, ten years to get a drug out. You know, I'm sure many of you have friends and family who might be suffering from chronic illness, right? Um, it shouldn't take that long for drugs to go through R&D development, <coughs> regulators, and come to market. You know, I'm going to add one more thing to that, and because it, a lot of people are stuck at home. Um, when, when I started Draper University, uh, it made me a better venture capitalist because I understood, I understood real estate, I understood what was going in education, I had a better sense for, uh, I, I got more contacts with more people who, um, who were starting businesses. I was closer to the entrepreneur. There were many things that happened, but it wasn't my initial plan. Uh, what I would do, I mean, my son just learned how to play the guitar at home because he was trapped at home. Uh, I recommend for all of you to, to pick something up that is unrelated to your work and, uh, and learn it, and then see if you can apply it to 
uh, to your work after you become an expert at it. Uh, whether you're, you're staying in and playing games you know, on Twitch, whether you're um, learning guitar, whether you practice dance, singing, you know, whatever, yeah, any of the fun things that you want to do. Um, it, uh, whatever you do, uh, just build a skill set that you can then apply even if it doesn't seem at all related, you can eventually apply it to your work. Um, some of the best entrepreneurial ideas came from somebody who kind of went off in a weird direction and then something cool happened. I know Steve Jobs did. He became a calligrapher and then he figured out how to, uh, you know, make fonts and, and uh, desktop printing was started. So that was a big deal. Um, okay, let's take a pitch. Andy, you want to stick around, hear a pitch? Do we have a pitch? I'll ask the producer, whatever the producer wants me to do. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jose's on? I thought Jose was going to show up. Oh, he's coming in on Zoom. God, the Zoom, greatest thing ever. There he is. There's How are you part guys of doing? Him. doing great. There he is. There well, Jose, you're you're like one of these uh, dolls that has three parts, and you know your head, your your top of your head's here, and your eyes are here, and your smile is here. But you know we're getting the technology down here. It's a, you know, we try things. Doesn't always work. Okay, you're here. Yep. Can we hear yep, Jose? Okay, you're here. Okay, Jose, turn off your sound and give us the pitch. <laughs> Perfect. Can you can you hear me? I can't hear him. Yeah. Andy can hear him. I can, can, I can hear Jose. Hear here. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I noticed there's a little okay, uh, we're good. Uh, lag between it. Okay, Jose, go ahead, give us a pitch. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Montero. I'm from Riverside, California, and I'm 26 years old. And I'm a an, uh, recent alumni graduate from Draper University of spring 2019. So I'm excited to be here and to share a little bit about my startup and what we're doing here at Blue Social. Um, so essentially, uh, what Blue is, is a mobile app that introduces you to people you cross paths with in real life using Bluetooth and NFC technology. So the idea is it works like a name tag where you could turn it on. And as soon as you walk past someone, you'll be notified in real time to where you could then notify that person that you want to be social. And one of our latest products is the blue smart card that Tim Draper has right there in his hand, where you could simply tap it on a smartphone and instantly bring up all your contact information, social medias, and contact details where users can add it directly into okay. their contacts. There you go. Works, it works like a charm. You just do this and then you swipe it and then it's better than giving out uh, your uh, a, a business card because you actually can give them other information here. Like you can, you can see that you can buy my book this way and you can read my, uh, my Instagrams or whatever. Uh, anyway, go ahead. Exactly. So, so, we, so the idea was to allow people to connect on the existing platforms that they already use. Uh, the idea came to me in 2012 while I was in college. Um, I noticed from a few observations. The first observation was I noticed when walking around campus that students weren't really socializing, but yet they were glued to their phones on social media. So it started to make me think, okay, is social media making us less social? The, the second observation that I made happened while I was in class. And I realized that every single student that was sitting around me had an online identity. They were all on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, but yet there was no way to know who these individuals were without having to walk up and formally introduce myself. So I knew there had to be a better way to connect the digital worlds and the physical worlds. 
So in 2016, I incorporated the company Blue and started to build a team. And we first launched our mobile app that uses Bluetooth in 2016 of October, where we grew organically to about 10,000 users from conventions, conferences, and even, and even schools. And um, one of our biggest challenge, and, and like I shared with you, Tim, back at Draper University, was that our biggest challenge was building the network effect. Because in order to discover someone within Bluetooth, it required them to have our mobile app. So the question was, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, or was it magic? Well, our latest product, the Blue Smart Card, is our magic. This allows individuals who don't have the mobile app to share their information with people who don't have the mobile app instantly. And in the last, I would say, we launched this product of August of 2019 of last year. And in six months, we've sold over 30,000 all over the world, um, generating close to over a half a million in sales and creating over 850,000 social interactions worldwide. And so this is very important because our mission as a technology company was to use technology to encourage people to be social. So what better time <laughs> it is than now when we're all quarantined to get ready to be social again. YOLO. So, um, so go ahead and um, tell these guys what your, your new plan is. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, so because we use Bluetooth technology to introduce you to people you cross paths with, we've always been big on using technology for social good. So one of the latest features that we're gonna be releasing um, this next week is what we call a COVID-19 exposure notification. So the way this works is, let's say um, Tim Draper and I, we, we met up and then four days later, um, knock on wood, Tim, that Tim, uh, you know, tests positive for COVID-19. I'm and sure I've had it. it. <laughs> I've yeah, met so many so, people around the world, I'm sure I've had it. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, so what happens is, is if you test positive for COVID-19, there's what they call, um, there's these workers, what they call contract tracers, who will then go and ask you, Tim, hey, Tim, where in the last 14 days, who did you talk to on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Who did you cross paths with? And you have to manually recollect all that information manually. And that's just not possible, you know, because I don't, I don't know about you, but I can't even remember the person that I met last Wednesday, right? So with our technology and what we call our auto networking technology, it allows users to turn on the app, put it back in their pocket, and as soon as they cross paths with people in real life and so forth, the idea is we allow users to now opt in to get a notification to receive if they have, made, have been exposed to someone with COVID-19. So the way this works is, let's say Tim Draper tests positive for COVID-19, what he can do is now anonymously notify all the devices that he interacted with in the last 14 days with our mobile app. So, um, you know, I kind of like the approach you're taking because uh, other people are looking at this as, as a way that government can control us and make sure that we're, you know, within six, we're not within six feet or we, um, I like the idea that it's opt in. People can have it if they want. They can be alerted if they're nearby somebody who's got COVID. They can be um, alerted. They can alert if they have it and they can alert anonymously. I kind of like that. Um, are you concerned that people will take this technology and use it uh, for control purposes, like government control? Yes, yes, that is, a, that is a big concern because as we see, a lot of contact tracing apps are popping up. A lot of governments are releasing, like Israel just released their contact tracing app that uses GPS. Um, Singapore has a contact tracing app that uses Bluetooth. And these are all government related apps. And, you know, it's scary. And a lot of people are scared um, about these big companies like Google and Apple also introducing their uh, API for this because you know this is this type of data is is very valuable and a lot of people are questioning you know hey you know with these companies they're like hey what are you going to do with our data after covid-19 because remember covid-19 <laughs> is only temporary so we want to make sure we be careful on that hey um, so so some one of our viewers said um, 
in regards to your new plan, there's already an app that has come up doing exactly what you're doing called Novid. And, uh, and then uh, lots of apps coming out. I'm sure there's already an app for everything, but that doesn't stop new ones from entering, uh, entering the market. And they're also asking me why I back this, you guys, rather than backing somebody else. I'll quickly answer that one. I didn't know about the other one. I knew about yours because you went to Draper University and you graduated, graduated with flying colors. So go ahead and answer the question about competition and all the other stuff that's out there and why this is special. Right, so there's a lot of contact tracing competitors popping up. There's at least 50 of them that have came out in the last two weeks. But in order for a contact tracing application to actually have a value or substance, is it requires a 60% of the population to be on this network. So it requires a network effect. So whatever, whether they choose us or anyone else, they have to be wary that you know it does require a network effect and we can't all be on different platforms. Mm. So one of us, whether it's blue or someone else, and we believe it'll blue, be blue, is one of us is gonna create that network effect that we'll have to be able to create that value for this contact tracing system. Um, are you, um are you concerned that the data, um, how the data might end up being used? I mean, if, so, if you might, you might be, you turn on your tracer, you know exactly, people can figure out exactly where you are or do, whatever you're doing. Well, that's a, so with Bluetooth, the nice thing about it is it doesn't give up your location. So it, it's, it's pure, it's, it doesn't give up your location. So the beauty of this is the way, let's say um, me, let's say we cross paths in our devices. What we're doing is we're storing all the, all the interactions on your device locally. So it's not going up to our server. It's not going up to it. The only reason and way it'll go up to our server is when they send a notification to alert the nearby devices that they cross paths with. And as soon as that notification is, is sent, we, all the data goes null. We delete it. So, um, so that way we could fight against bad actors there. <laughs> Mario the Great 2020 says, let's reboot the country. <laughs> Gotta love, I yes. love our audience here. They are, they are the beginning of a revolution. It's amazing. Hey, Jose, I wanna ask, you know, I know a lot of our audience are more of in your age range than my age range. So we're thinking about different things. Uh, I'm thinking you as a 26 year old, when you started the company, I imagine, you know, just like the Facebook founder, you know, it, it's, it's girls, it's dating. Did it ever cross your mind this becomes sort of a, a, a sort of a social app for entertainment or recreational purposes? Yeah, so, so the idea is, you know, the beauty about Blue, what we, stand, what we say is IA for everyone, everywhere, anywhere, anytime. Because it is Bluetooth, it doesn't require um, internet to be able to interact with individuals around you. So the idea is, is the use case can be used for an, indiv an individual to where, wherever he is. So it could be used for social, like in colleges where we have thousands of users right now using it for in their sororities and fraternities, all the way to professionals um, looking to meet each other at the conferences or conventions. So maybe I'll make another prediction. I'm on, I'm on a roll, Tim. Yeah, so, uh, so far. So um, this may, don't, don't take the, this prediction the wrong way, right? So Korea had an outbreak. There's a super spreader. This is a 26-year-old guy, you know, who's asymptomatic. So this guy went to three or four nightclubs in the night. And I don't know how this guy does it, you know. I, I can't even... <laughs> go to three to four locations on a day, you know, when there's a quarantine in place, but he did. So he has spread it to 50 people, and then these 50 people then spread to 2,000, right? So I have a prediction. I think um, if you are using this for the quarantine, this might be the young people may actually be the first ones out in the strolls. Huge numbers, right? So in a way, you might be able to use this to track the super spreader. And if you could track this anonymously so nobody gets shamed and you don't give away GPS information, it could be pretty interesting. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so we wouldn't be tracking the super spreader, but he would know that he had spread it to that many people. So the idea is that user will have to, you know, out of good faith, 
alert those people because maybe it may be friends or family, but that he would send that notification anonymously. Yeah. So you say you've got a thousand, one of the questions here, you've got a thousand users in colleges. Which colleges are you already launched in? And what's your go-to market, market strategy for Blue? And I think other people are probably curious how you're going to make money. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So, um, so the way that we're kind of approaching the the colleges. So, yeah. So, firstly, uh, we've been at mostly colleges here all across the U.S. So, we partnered with uh, one of the largest fraternities, Sigma Alpha Epsilon, where we have members all across the U.S. at over a hundred campuses that are using this for their Russian recruitment uh, processes. So we're taking a more social approach with social organizations on campus to, to seed it in colleges. And in regards to the network effect worldwide, you know, our whole goal is to, to create that local ubiquity. So it's gonna definitely start with the younger crowd, um, just like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, they all started with the younger crowd and then eventually the older demographic got on it. So that's the same approach that we're doing and that we're kind of wanna take that. And then in regards to monetization, right now we charge $34.99 for our smart cards. It's a one-time fee. And then we also are introducing a premium subscription. So we had a lot of um, customers ask us to for more customization, more networks, um, being able to attach files, um, better analytics. So we're coming out with a premium subscription that um, users will be able to upgrade to be able to get that type of stuff. So, so one of your users, uh, one of our viewers asked, is this um, uh, something that, uh, are these two separate apps or are they the same app? What, what happens? Do people first uh, sign up to, to give their cards away and then, uh, then they can check for COVID or are they just checking for COVID and then uh, maybe then they sign up for, for Blue Social? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's, it's all one platform. Because we've had the Bluetooth technology since 2016 and we've proven it, um, this is the same technology Google, Apple, MIT, and all these other organizations are trying to build, but we've already had. So this is simply an addition, a feature that we're doing it because we're a company that's all about using technology for social good. So what we've temporarily done was we've temporarily disabled the networking mode in our apps because we don't want to encourage people to be social during these social distancing time. And we're introducing our new feature, which is the COVID-19 exposure notification. So as soon as that kind of, as people go and, and the lockdowns lifts, then we're gonna bring back the networking mode to allow users to be social with care because you know the virus will, will always be around. And it's not about staying quarantined in your house until it leaves, you know, because because that's not the way to do it. And there's a lot of things, and there's not a lot of there's a lot of reasons why we shouldn't be doing that. But the idea is how can we allow our community, our our friends and family to go out there and be social but also be safe at the same time. This is an interesting idea HBX1 has. With a lot of events becoming online, you could probably create virtual cards and integrate with platforms like Brella. Ah, I, like I don't that know word Brella, too. but it's an interesting idea. Anyway, beware, that's great. So our users are helpful. My God, they got great questions. They're great entrepreneurs. I, we got the best viewers. It's amazing. Yeah, and, yeah can, and, and we got four already signed up. So, you know, I hope we get more signed up for the future. Um, can I also share something, Tim? Yeah, please do. Yeah, so we also, um, if you guys don't know yet, Tim Draper and Andy did invest 1.1 million into Blue. And uh, we currently have a crowdfunding campaign available on Republic where we've now raised oh, two, right. over 200% of our minimum goal. So you could go to our website, which are the- Wait, Republic if you've already- Okay, hey, we're back. I hope you bought whatever our sponsor was selling. Uh, we, <laughs> we don't have any sponsors yet, <laughs> but we will. And when we do, I hope you'll buy whatever it is they're selling. In the meantime, you can buy, you can sign up for Draper University. Uh, no, they're not one of our sponsors. Um, oh, oh my gosh. 
Okay, one of my one of our viewers who has signed up with us, questionable cooking. Hey, they're not listed. They're not a oh, they're not a subscriber, but they were one of our first viewers. Has written me and sent me a sent me some of his hot sauce. Uh, Matt Gilson from Questionable Cooking sent me some of his hot sauce. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. It, it basically was leaking when it came. Uh, and I, I hope it doesn't have to be refrigerated. But did, did it um, it's great it, that entrepreneurs are doing this kind of thing, sending me. Did, did, and and I, got a, I got a great mask in the mail um, because I guess people feel like I should wear it. And it's it's Spider Man and Captain America. Um, yeah, Bitcoin. But man. anyway, I I just like to say to Jose for this amazing presentation, just let it rain, baby. Oh wait. This <laughs> is supposed to shoot it out. There we go. Hey, let it rain. <laughs> Um, awesome. Good. Anything you, you want to add, Jose or Andy? You got any other questions for Jose? No, keep up the good work. Yeah. Thanks again, and uh, I appreciate you guys' support and, and look to make you guys a fortune. Okay. I've got a question for you because oh. my son, uh, well, my, my sons both sort of work with me, but one son worked for me, and I know you're working with your dad. Um, what is it that's keeping you working with your dad? Um, are you, who can fire whom? And, uh, and is it okay working with your dad or is it sort of, you feel uh, smothered? Yeah, so I honestly, I love working with my dad. I, I feel like I've learned so much in just terms of processes and systems. You know, he was a fellow entrepreneur when he started his first business at 24 and then went to the corporate world. So. He has a lot of experience and, and for us, I feel like we're very, uh, we have that mastermind effect where you put our two minds together, there's always a third mind there that are giving and shooting us ideas. That's your mother. <laughs> <laughs> her too, her too. <laughs> Terrific. So, um, <laughs> oh, questionable cooking has come on the show and he says it's fermented. <laughs> Okay, well, good. I'm glad I learned that. I, I know when I can use it. Tell them to send you a to roll of toilet paper with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to get toilet paper. That's a yeah. lot to ask. Right, that is a lot to ask. A lot to ask in the, these times. So, um, well, good. It's been great having you on the show. I hope that some other entrepreneurs out there are inspired by your thinking and your drive. Um, I'm going to ask you a question I want all entrepreneurs out there to think about. How do you get, how do you delight your customer? And then how do you get your customer to become your sales force? You know, so the first part is you got to delight them by creating a quality product. And then the second part is taking in their, uh, taking in their feedback and, and to f make them feel part of it. So that's kind of the approach that we have taken. We have had a lot of customers who provided feedback that we're taking in and making them own almost because this is, this is a product we're building for the people. So all the suggestions out there we're open to and we hear and listen to and that we share with the team. Hey, Jackson, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, I think has asked a really interesting question. It sounds like something a venture capitalist would ask. Where do you see Blue Social in five years? So I see Blue Social in five years as a tool that you can use to interact with not just people, but the world of Internet of Things. Because the Internet of Things is, is still going to come, there's going to be tons of beacons and sensors that are going to be interacting with us, and it's about our data being safe and secure during those times. Terrific. Okay, well, we're going to, um, I think we're going to call it a day today. Uh, thank you all so much for being a part of this uh, amazing Be the Hero show. Be the hero. Woo. I think. Um, 
just keep coming. We're, we're live on Twitch Mondays and Thursdays, uh, 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific time. So if you're from other time zone, you got to figure, it, figure that out. And, uh, and we're loving our viewers. We think this is really fun. And I hope you spread the word. Uh, if we're delighting you, we hope that our customers become our sales force. So spread the good word. And uh, great having you. And thank you, Andy Tang, for being thank a guest on our show. Great, great audience. Good seeing you, Jose. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, and then we're going to end it with a song. And I'm going to learn this song, but I haven't learned it yet. So it's a really good song. So listen, this is, this is the reason people will come back to this show. This song. Is this a song that I, I is that the song that I'm thinking of? No, this is, oh, okay. a, this is a song called Be the Hero. Oh, I You see. can be uh, the hero. It is. Off, you got some new materials. Bye, guys. OK, we're going to kick you off Zoom, but uh, okay, because we're about to play the song. Okay. Thanks bye. so much, everybody. This world's got trouble that I don't understand. I don't understand. We need help on the door. Won't you lend a hand? Won't you lend a hand? They say out of darkness. Out of darkness. There must come a light. There must come a light. So come spark the candle. So come spark Mark that change. Tell us wrong from right. Tell us wrong from right. Could you be the hero? Could you be the hero? Come up with a plan. Come up with a plan. You could be the hero. You could be the hero. You would be the man. And you would be the man or the woman or the that. Puzzle piece is missing. What should we do? What should we do? Could you be the hero? Could you be the hero? And, and make, make our, our problems go away. And make our problems go away. Could Give me you a hero. be the hero? Be the hero, be the hero today. today. Go be a hero today. All right. Okay, we're going to spin the wheel, and one of our subscribers is going to get a free book or a t-shirt. And it, it turns out it is Afro Samuria. What is that? Afro? Afro Samurai. Well, spelled wrong. It's Samuria. Okay, Afro Samurai, you win a book, and we'll figure out how to get it to you. You got to, uh, oh, you can send me an email. Tim at draper.vc. I will get it to God over here. God will then get you your book. So hopefully it gets to you. Thank you once again. Come back on Monday. Be the hero. Too late. Save them for the next show. Okay.